Greetings and welcome to Faith and Victory Church Online. Um, I'm going to be ministering tonight, but first I wanted us to do the offering and then we'll get into today's message. So um, if you would like to give, you will see on your screen some options for online giving. And um, I'll give you a few moments to utilize those. Also remember that on Sundays, um, we are now meeting at 1230, our new service time. If you were not aware of that change. All right. We'll just pray real quick um, over the offering, and then we'll get into tonight's message. All right, Father God, we just thank you for this service tonight. We thank you for this message that you have, um, for you know it to be spoken, how you wish for it to be spoken, and and the things that you wish to speak to your people that you just you know speak to them and and help let this word be received and help change us and um, give us insight into these times that we're living in and help us to grow and, and, and change and shift as you know you instruct us and you show us and reveal things to us in your word. And Father, we thank you for this offering. We thank you that as, as the people are obedient to give and to sow, you are faithful you are faithful to meet their needs and to provide and to sustain them no matter what it may seem like around them father god we thank you you are our source you sustain us even in the midst of famine we are taken care of and father god we just praise you for that we thank you for that and I just pray for the people as they're faithful to do what you've said in your word. You're faithful to provide and bless them. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, you know, oh, it's probably been maybe a couple of months now since I shared on a Wednesday night. But um, if you remember, if you were there, I shared on, you know, Perilous Times and um you know the church in perilous times and how we can stand in those times and and we're actually going to be getting into that same scripture um but we're going to be looking at some other things and i think it's very important that we understand as you know believers as the church we understand the times that we're living in and we understand the signs of the last days and um you know we're going to be looking at this in detail um because you know even during the time that paul was walking the earth he talked about like us them being in the last days and you know here we are two thousand years later and i think it's even more evident that we are living in the last days. And it's not a time to be scared. It's not a time for the church to be in fear. You know, um, we're not afraid of what's gonna happen, but it is a time for us to be informed and to be aware and to be prepared for what's coming so that we're not taken by surprise. You know, I think back um, as a kid and, and reading the verse where it talks about like, you know, in the last days, even the most elect would be deceived and even the most elect would basically fall away and stuff. And reading that as a child thinking, no, there's no way, there's no way. And, but the point is like, even when I didn't believe like, you know, that that could happen, I still studied it and I still knew that verse. And unfortunately, when I saw those things happen, I saw people who were, you know, established in ministry or, you know, I looked up to that fell away and either had nothing to do with God at all or they completely rejected any sound biblical doctrine and they, you know, it's sad, 
But the point is when those times came, even though it hurt to see it happen, it wasn't a surprise to me because I was prepared because I knew in scripture that in those days, even the most elect would, you know, be deceived. And I think it's important for us to not be deceived. I think it's important for us to know what the signs of the last days are, what the signs of this last generation is, and for us to know what those signs are so that we're prepared because we don't want to be, you know, the most elect that are deceived. And we don't want to miss, you know, doing what God's called us to do in these last days. Um, and we're going to look at some things tonight. Um, hopefully I get through everything. Um, I do want to like, you know, say like there's, uh, there's a really good book out there um, that's kind of inspired this in me. And it's by Rick Renner. And it's called Last Days Survival Guide. So this is, this is not a sponsored plug or anything like that, but I just, I think, you know, it's a good source for what we're going through right now. And you're going to see why. Um, but anyway, I want us to talk about tonight, the last days and the generation that represents the last days. So the last days, self-absorbed generation. And that's what I want to talk about. So we're actually going to start in um, 2 Timothy 3.1. And I will read it out of the Amplified first. And it says, but, in, but understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble. Hard to deal with and hard to bear. <clears throat> so what is this saying here? Um, and if we look at another translation, it says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. <clears throat> so when we look at this verse, I want to give a little bit of, um, you know, some background on this time and what Paul was speaking to when he was speaking and writing or writing to Timothy. Um, but here we see um, Timothy was living in um, Ephesus. So he was actually serving as a pastor of the church there. And so a little bit of background about this time that Timothy was living in and that Paul, were, Paul was living in. Um, so Ephesus was one of the most frequented places, you know, um, in that time period in the world. And one of the most visited places in Ephesus, in that city, was the stadium. So um, every day, like thousands of spectators, if you know anything about ancient Roman culture and so forth, the stadiums, the Colosseums, they were like a big deal. And so thousands of spectators would travel up and down what's called the Stadium Road in the morning, the afternoon, and the early evening to attend all kinds of events. Um, this stadium in Ephesus actually seated 30,000 spectators. And it was always buzzing with activities. Um, of course, we know like some of the most famous of those activities are like gladiator fights. Like who, everybody knows about gladiator fights. Um, they also did wild animal matches. They would do like animal hunts in them, um, chariot races, and even the execution of common criminals. And that included, and we talked about this last time, um, that included c killing Christians. So these stadiums and coliseums and so forth were where these type of events took place. It was entertainment for this culture. Um, so the stadium road was used by people who were captivated and obsessed with entertainment. Is this sounding familiar at all? Um, and so, you know, it's significant when we look at this in light of um, the Apostle Paul describing the world's conditions in the last days. Because here we have a culture that was captivated and obsessed with entertainment. Oh, don't get me wrong. I love movies. You know, I love TV shows and all that kind of stuff. But I do think it is important to note 
that, you know, even here, this people group and this culture was obsessed with entertainment. And some of that entertainment was pretty brutal. And, um, you know, when we think of it, we're like, oh my goodness. But look at, you know, games that we play today, like video games or so forth. Um, they're just as brutal, maybe not real, you know, they're realistic, but you're not actually participating in those things per se, but it is something to note, like it's that same type of entertainment, um, just in a different form. And so, you know, when Paul was writing the second letter to Timothy, Timothy was living in this city in Ephesus and he was serving as the pastor of the church. And, um, at the time, Timothy was already dealing with these societal issues and problems that had made their way into the church. So that surrounding environment had leached into the church. And um, we see here that even in spite of that, you know, like Paul is exhorting Timothy, but also I feel like he is also, he's pointing to 2000 years down the road and into the future, into our time to describe what would occur at the very end of the church age. And um, as believers, we need to know those signs. And we need to know these are the signs right before Jesus comes back. And so um, we want to be aware so that we can make the most of the time that we have here on the earth. And the, the short time, it's, it's growing shorter and shorter so that we can be effective and we can, um, you know, do what we're supposed to do in these last days. And so um, I do want to look at, you know, here, Paul, through the Holy Spirit, describes 25 characteristics that will emerge in a society at the end of the age, the end of the church age, the end of, you know, that time. Um, and the first and foremost sign of the last of the last days is that men are going to be lovers of their own selves. We live in the selfie society. We live in the selfie days. I mean, we literally, our language has been expanded to include a form of photography that is about self. And so it, it's important to note when we're looking at these signs of what the last days are, the characteristics of that last generation, we're living in it. So, um, Going back to 2 Timothy 3, 1, I want us to look at this. And again, I'm not a Greek scholar, but thank God for people who have broken things down and made it easy to understand and stuff. Um, people like Rick Renner, people who have, you know, like Strong's Concordance and those kinds of things that we can pull from and understand an even deeper meaning behind these scriptures. So we're going to look at 2 Timothy 3, 1, and we're going to kind of break it apart and break it down. Um, so it says again, we'll read this again. It says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Okay, so it's important that we understand this. And I want us to break it down and look at this like word by word. It's kind of like we're going to school tonight. <laughs> um, so we're going to look at this first word, this. And in the Greek word, the Greek word for this is um, totu, toto. If I mutilate these pronunciations, I am sorry. Um, but it is T-O-U-T-O. And it means it's pointing to something very specific. So um, then we also then we we also see the word also, and the Greek word for that is de d e, and it signifies something indeed, something categorical, and something emphatic. And then when you combine these two words, it's as if the Holy Spirit is saying to you know us. He's it's almost like he's raising his voice. 
You know, he's like, he, he's speaking with emphasis and um, reaching, you know, he's reaching through these words to us. I mean, the word of God, it is God speaking to us. You know, even though we have Timothy is, or Paul's writing to Timothy, he speak, God is speaking to us through this. And so when we look at this, it's, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit's almost like raising his voice, like you need to pay attention. And it's as if he's saying, you need to know this emphatically. It is something that must be acknowledged and not ignored. So let's look at this in more detail. We go on to the word that. So e even here, we see this word that is significant. It is from the Greek word hoti, H-O-T-I, and it points to a specific and important point. So what is the, the Spirit of God emphasizing with such urgency here? He said that in the last days, perilous times shall come. So when we look at this, um, we know the word last, if you study it out in the Greek, it means eschatos, okay? And so this is where we get the word eschatology. Um, I actually took an eschatology class when I was at Rhema, and um, my teacher's gone on to, you know, be with the Lord, Brian McCallum. But, you know, what is eschatology? Well, eschatology is the study of end times or the, la the last things, last days, um, what we're talking about tonight. So this word last, you know, is where we get eschatology from. So it's eschatos. And it is described as the ultimate ending of a thing, the extreme end. So it's used in classical Greek literature to depict a place that's like furthest away. So um, that would be like the very ends of the earth. Um, it was also a navigational term that was used to describe the final port or the last stopping off point in a journey. It's something that is final and it denotes the very end. So it's not just like 2,000 years ago, they're saying, oh, the last days, and there's still time. But when it's talking here, specifically in this passage about the last days, it's talking about the last of the last days. So when we're talking biblically and, you know, we're looking at scripture and so forth, the last days actually began on the day of Pentecost. You know, Peter confirmed this in Acts 2.17. But we've been living in the last days for nearly 2,000 years. So, um, you know, some people call that the age of grace. Some people call that the church age. But the Bible calls it the last days. And we know when we come to 2 Timothy 3.1, the Holy Spirit isn't talking about that 2,000 year time frame. He is pointing to the ultimate end. He's pointing to the very end of that time frame or the last of the last days. And so when you take all of these facets in, you know, of this word last and you, you really take them into consideration, you would translate the first part of this verse as in the last of the last days. When you come to the very end of time and cannot go any further, when you've reached the very last port and can sell no further, perilous times will come. So perilous times, those end times, it's going to be unlike anything any previous generation has ever experienced. Um, the word perilous in the Greek is the word chalepos or chalepos. Um, and it is only used twice in the New Testament. So it's used here, and then it's also used in Matthew 8, 28. It describes something dangerous, risky, hurtful, and it pictures something that is wounding. So this tells us that the last days are going to be filled with danger, risk, hurt, and there will be wounding times. 
hello. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you, when you start looking at this, like we're living in those times, I, you know, I, I just know from my experience and, you know, other people that I talk to who are in ministry or in ministers homes or whatever, like these are wounding times. Like there's a lot of hurt going on. And I mean, there's friends turning against friends and all kinds of stuff. Our nation's divided. I mean, it's, it's wounding times. Um, so the word chalepos translated here as perilous is the same word that's used in literature to depict wild, vicious, uncontrollable animals that were unpredictable and dangerous. It depicts a deadly menace. It denotes anything that is treacherous or potentially harmful. So the last days will be unpredictable uncontrollable, menacing, and treacherous. So those are, you know, that's, that kind of like breaks some things up and kind of gives you like a little bit more understanding. In addition to that, this word chalepos is used to describe ugly words that when spoken are hurtful and emotionally hard to bear. So it carries the idea of an action, a place, a person, or a thing that is harsh, harmful, and filled with high risk. Um, so this is how it's used in Matthew 8, 28 to describe the two demonized men of the Gadarenes and the territory in which they lived along the Sea of Galilee. Um, it was a harsh area that was filled with danger and high risk. The people were terrified to pass through, um, you know, because of the, the demoniacs or the demon possessed people that terrorized travelers. And it's the picture of end time events that will create an impasse for people that are journeying through life. So this is kind of, you know, depicting that. Um, also, you know, the Holy Spirit warned us 2,000 years in advance that the very end of days, perilous times shall come. And so when we look at the word times in the Greek, it's the word keros, and it is described as a specific or definite season. So he's not just talking about just any time. He is talking about a specific and a definite season. So the very last season of time will be a specific or a definite season that is different from all the seasons before. So living in the last of the last days, we're going to see things that no other generation has ever witnessed. So whoever is in that last of the last days, they are going to see things that no other generation has ever witnessed before. Um, something else to consider when we're breaking the scripture apart and kind of looking at all these meanings is that the phrase shall come is the Greek word in esteemy, and it is the compound word of in, en, um, meaning in, like I n, <laughs> um, and the word histemi, which means to stand, to stand in, to stand in the middle of to be surrounded, to be encumbered, or to stand in the very middle of what is being discussed. So we could um, paraphrase 2 Timothy 3.1 as saying, you emphatically and categorically need to know with unquestionable certainty that in the very end of days, when time has sailed to its last port, and no more time remains for the journey. The last day, the last season will stand in the midst of uncontrollable, unpredictable, hurtful, treacherous, menacing times that will be emotionally difficult for people to bear. So looking at this, 
you know, when I look at this and I like look at all this broken down and everything, I can see we're living in these last days. But the thing is, we are graced and equipped to do so. Praise God. So, you know, the Holy Spirit didn't give us prophetic insight to scare us. This is not meant to be fearful and to have us be afraid of these days. But he gave it to us to prepare us to live victoriously. So even though we may be living in these menacing times, these times of danger, these times of high risk, you know, we're going to see people set free miraculously and we're going to see people healed by the power of God. That's why we need to be prepared and we don't need to be in fear. We don't need to be afraid like, oh, what are we going to do? The whole world's falling apart. What's going to happen if this person wins this election or what's going to happen if, you know, this ruler rises to power in this country or, you know, we don't need to be afraid. He's equipped us. He has graced us. He has empowered us for these days. You know, he chose for you to be here in this hour and in this season and this generation. And it is by no mistake that you were hand selected to be part of the last of the last days. So, you know, God doesn't want us to be, um, doesn't want, you know, the troubling last days to cause us to stay in our houses, close the blinds, hide from what's going on in the world around us. <laughs> does, does that sound familiar? <laughs> As I was saying that, I was just kind of, <laughs> this is, this is what we're living in. Like, you know, for a while there, <laughs> and in some places still like, I mean, Yes, like there are regulations and that kind of stuff, but you have some people who are literally like scared and hiding in their homes. And that's not what we're called to do. I'm all for being smart and taking precautions, but he didn't call us to hide in our house and close all of our blinds and be scared to go outside. Um, but, you know, he... um. He desires that we see, you know, these situations that exist during our time as opportunities. And, you know, they're opportunities for us to let his glorious power and his presence manifest through us to our world and be a light to our world in a dark and scary time. God considers you well able to live for him and to fulfill his purpose for your life in the midst of perilous last days. So um, looking at the characteristics of last day society, that was just my little encouragement to you, <laughs> but looking at the characteristics of last day society, there are 25 characteristics I want us to look at. Um, so, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul gives us 25 characteristics in 2 Timothy 3, verses 2 through 8. So, that follows that verse 1 that we were just looking at and describes what the last of the last days will be like. These descriptions include those who exhibit the, these following traits. So, these are the 25 characteristics of the last day's generation. And I want you to listen to these because I don't know, I feel like we are living in the last of the last days when I look at this. One, lovers of their own selves. Two, covetous. Three, boasters. Four, proud. Five, blasphemers. Six, disobedient to parents. Seven, unthankful. 8. Unholy. 9. Without natural affection. 10. Truce breakers. 11. False accusers. 12. Incontinent. 13. Fierce. 14. Despisers of those that are good. 15. Traitors. 
16, heady. 17, high-minded. 18, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. 19, having a form of godliness. 20, but denying the power thereof. 21, creep into houses. 22, lead captive silly women laden with sins and led away with divers lusts, ever learning yet never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 23, they are like Janice and Jambres who withstood Moses and resisted the truth. 24, of corrupt minds and reprobate concerning the faith. 25, evil seducers that shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. <clears throat> so, I don't have time to get into, you know, breaking down all 25 of those characteristics in more depth. That's definitely an, a great opportunity for studying. Um, but the focus of tonight is I want us to look at this last day society. So I just gave you 25 characteristics and, um, you know, I just want us to look at what this last day society is. So the Holy Spirit alerts us that one of the principal signs that we've entered the last of the last days will be a prevalent, inordinate, self-love, unhealthy love that people have for themselves. It pictures those that are self-focused, self-centered, and self-absorbed. Like I said earlier, like I, looking at this, looking at this this in depth, I see the society we're in. Now, you know, whether, you know, some people may say, well, I don't think that's the end of the end of the day. So well, we're definitely getting into that season and that generation. It is definitely paving the way for that. So, you know, if it's worse than this, maybe, maybe it's another generation. But I, when I look at scripture and I see this, I see like, this is the generation that we're talk we're told about. So the phrase lovers of their own selves is a, it's, it's an interesting Greek word. Um, it means philatos, philatos. <laughs> um, it's from the word phylos and the word autos. So the word phylos means to love or to be fond of. And it denotes the love, fondness, attraction, or romantic feelings that one has for another. Autos means oneself. So this is kind of a weird word here. Because when the words are compounded together, it describes love of self, self and inordinate self-love, self-preoccupation, or one in love with and consumed with himself or herself. Um, so the person is someone who is self-absorbed and self-focused. So the first sign of a last day society is a misdirection of love. So from this misdirection, all these other vices that the Apostle Paul listed flow. So that all those other devices that we looked at, all those things flow from this initial misdirection of love. Um, so the Holy Spirit foretells us that people at the end of the age will look at life in terms of meeting their own needs above anything else. So in other words, their primary loyalty will not be to God. It will not be to their nation. It will not be to their family, to their employer, to their employees, or to those they influence. Their strictest loyalty will be to themselves. As a result, all else will go astray as the focus of their lives becomes fundamentally off balance. 
So their love is going to become misdirected. And I mean, we're seeing this. Hello. <laughs> we are seeing this. We are in the selfie society, the selfie church. This is what we are seeing. We are seeing the misdirection of love. When self is the foundation of a person's life or of a society as a whole, it causes everything else to be off balance. So the words, men shall be lovers of themselves, depicts a self-consumed, depicts self-consumed individuals whose wants and needs are at the center of their lives above anything else. Their first consideration is always their own self-interest. And we are living in a society that is all about self. You know, um, one troubling phrase that I hear a lot these days, and I don't know if you hear it, but I see it. Maybe it's because of the generation I'm in and I'm, I'm seeing it with people my age and younger, but it is my truth. I'm just speaking my truth or I'm teaching them to live their truth, you know, whatever is their truth. But I see so many people, even Christian people using this. Well, this is my truth. No, 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 no. That again is getting in that self focus. It's not your truth. It is the truth. Whether it aligns with your truth, sweetheart, or not, it is the truth, God's truth. And when we come to this place where it's, I'm just speaking my truth, you are putting yourself above God's truth and the truth. And I don't know about you, I don't want to be in that position. I don't want to be speaking my truth. I want to be speaking what God says about me. I want to be speaking God's truth. So this message that the Holy Spirit is giving us is so plain. In the last days, societies will be consumed with love of self. If people are philatos, philatos, their love is primarily directed to themselves. So it means in the last of the last days, Society will be narcissistic. It will be self-consumed, off balance, and faulty at the core. So this is a chief sign and indicator that we have entered the very last days. Since the list, you know, in 2 Timothy 3 starts off with this type of misdirected love, it's easy to see how everything else on the list grows off balance and continues to grow further and further off balance as the conditions Paul is speaking to become more developed. So there is nothing wrong with loving ourselves, but in 2 Timothy 3.2, the Holy Spirit is speaking of self-love. You know, it can be very um, destructive when people destroy them all, their own selves. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, have loving yourself in that sense, because it can be very destructive to you as a person to, to hate yourself. You know, we don't want that. But what we're talking about here is self-love and it is completely out of balance. Um, it's selfishness. It's the result of misdirected love. So we want to make sure we are not a, a part of the Philados crowd. Um, you know, we want to keep our love directed in the right place. We don't want it directed at ourselves, you know, and off balance from what it should be. We want our love directed to God and towards others. Um, you know, it should always be the Lord first and then towards others. As we maintain that servant's heart, towards God and towards those he's placed around us, we will be protected from being infected by the narcissistic self-consumed mindset that is going viral in these last days. So, you know, I want that that's just what I wanted to talk about tonight is just 
this, you know, generation that the, the scripture, when you start pulling this apart, peeling back the layers, I definitely see evidence that we are living in the last of the last days. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to be in that group of people. <laughs> I do not want to be in that group of people that are absorbed with self and fit all those 25 lists of things. But when you have your love misdirected and you love and value things about you higher than you do the things of the word and what God has said about you, and you place those things more superior than what the word says, and you're speaking your truth, you are out of line with scripture and you are falling into this category of that generation that's in the last of the last days. Now to us, I think this is definitely a sign and a warning that we are in the last of the last days. When we look at this culture and the society that we live in, it is very self-absorbed. It is very narcissistic. Um, you know, with um, working in the schools and seeing the, the younger kids, like, how they always have their phones. I mean, they can't even function without, you know, they're sitting there, they're fixing their hair, they're taking little cute selfies and all this kind of stuff and putting a filter on it, throwing it up on Snapchat or TikTok or whatever they're doing. And they're so absorbed with them and, the, and their self. And it's because there's a misdirection of love. And, but when I, when you look at that, you see this society that Paul was describing by the unction of the Holy Spirit as the last of the last days. We see that we're living in that. So does that mean we're scared and we're fearful? No. But we want to make sure, as you know, he tells in 2 Timothy 2.15, that we study to show ourselves you know, approved by God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, because we are living in perilous times. We are living in times where people are obsessed with entertainment, people are obsessed with self, and if we allow that culture to invade us, to leech into the church, which it has, if we allow those... <coughs> <coughs> which it has, if we allow those things to take place, we, you know, are going to be not in a good place. We will become lovers of ourselves. And I don't, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be one of these people. I want to make sure my focus is on God and what he's called me to. So it's definitely a sign for us to be guarded, to be aware and to be prepared so that we can stand protected and victorious in these last days and not fall prey to the trap of the enemy and not fall prey to his devices and his tactics in these last days because people are falling right and left. And, you know, I don't want anyone, you know, to fall in that. Yes, I know there's people that are going to, but my heart is that, People, you know, as we're faithful to preach the word and speak the word, that people hear the word, they allow it to change them, they allow it to transform them, and that they're able to withstand the attacks of the enemy in these last days. They're able to stand in these perilous times and be unmoved, unshakable, and uncompromised. So, um, I think I got through <laughs> all my notes for tonight. It's a miracle. No, <laughs> um, you know, normally I will just get stuck on, <laughs> uh, like one section of my notes, but, um, you know, I, I hope this ministered to you. I hope that this, you know, helped you see we're living in the last days, but not to be afraid. And you know, that you have a part, you have an important part to play in this and that you know you understand your place and how to not fall prey to these devices praise god have a wonderful week and we will see you sunday